Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, one of the advantages of having a microcontroller board that can connect to the internet is you can synchronize with a date and time server and get the correct date and time. Now, if you don't have that kind of possibility, then you're going to have to have a battery backed up clock, which basically means that when the power goes off from the board, the little battery keeps the clock going so that when you do start up again, you can interrogate it and say, hey, give me the date and time. However, you've still got the problem is how do you set that date and time initially and how do you synchronize it to make sure there's no drift going on. When you have internet connectivity using a board like the Raspberry Pi Pico W, you can actually just go ahead and get the date and time from the internet. So in this video, I want to look at how you can make a binary clock with a Raspberry Pi Pico W, how we can synchronize with the internet, get the date and time. Of course, along the way, we're gonna talk about what is a binary clock. We're gonna look at how you wire up the eight by eight LED matrix that I'm gonna use. And finally, of course, some Python code. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. So if we're going to be building a binary clock, let's refresh our memory very quickly about what is binary. We speak in base 10 most of the time. Uh, that's what you learned at school, you know, add on, move to the next column uh, when you get a 10 and so on and so on. With binary, it's base two. So rather than naught to nine, we have naught to one, just two values. And so it goes like this, a zero is still zero. Uh, one is zero, 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 one. Why I've put the leading zeros here is it makes it easier to see how these progress. Of course, this is four bits. You can have eight bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, and so on. Uh, two is zero, zero. Well, we've gone beyond the one here. So we move to the next column. One, zero, three is one, one. Four is one, zero, zero. Five is zero, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then you can see eight is one, zero, zero, and that's how you go on. So we're gonna be representing the time using these sequences of zeros and ones, not the way that we would normally show the time. Now there are different styles you can use, so I'm gonna go through three different styles. Let's look at the first style. So this is how we're gonna be building it. We're using a matrix of 64 LEDs. Now, if the time is 14, 38, and 25 seconds, 14 is one, 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 zero. 38 is 100110 and 25 is 11001. So what you can do is you can actually represent 14 in this here. You've got eight bits really, so that's not any number between zero and 255. So of course the time, uh, 24 hours and up to six, 59 minutes, all fits perfectly in, in eight bits. So 14 would be 0111. And then 38, we leave a bit of space here, is going to be 011001, 011001. And then 25 is going to be 10011. So there is a, a binary clock uh, running uh, just using uh, three columns, one for each of the hour, minute and seconds. Now let's see that running on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Okay, now the second style I'm going to use really uses binary coded decimal. So rather than putting 14, we put one and then four. So we have one row for each of the two digits. 38 would be three and eight. And so there's three, there's eight. To it. So you end up using six columns uh, to do it. And really it's not 14. So we're not actually using the uh, equivalent of the the hour in binary. We're doing each digit. So that's why it's binary coded decimal because really we're reading it in decimal still 14. And then rather than a one, we put the binary representation of a one rather than a four, put the binary representation of four. So how does that look? So one is easy enough. There is the four. Then we leave a gap. There is the three. There is the eight there is the two and there is the five. So this two columns together are the hours, these two columns together are the minutes, these two columns together are the seconds with a blank uh, column in between. And again, let's have a look at that running. And the third style is not strictly binary, but it's a, an interesting way of showing the clock uh, just using the length here as a value. So one which just is one dot, four it is four dots. So that's actually quite easy to read. One and four, four, 14. Then we're gonna have a three, that's pretty easy. Then we have an eight, goes all the way up to the top. So 14, 38, 38, one, four, three, eight. Now, if it does get to a nine, obviously we're only using an eight by eight uh, grid. What I've decided is because this first one can never go higher than five, 
what we do is we pop over here and that shows nine. So when it goes up and then plop over to the top, that's nine. So this would be 1439. And then back to our example, 1438 and 25 seconds, two, five, two, five seconds. So there you go. And let's have a look at that running. Now, as I've shown you in the little demos there, I've actually got this up and running and we're using this little 8x8 matrix along with a Raspberry Pi Pico W. So here is a Raspberry Pi Pico W. The pinout is almost identical to that of the Raspberry Pi Pico. This LED actually has a different name, but basically all the same pins down here and down the left and right hand side. So we can use this. This square here is where the Wi-Fi stuff is to get the time from the internet. So you don't have to have a battery, you don't need to store it. You sync up with the time from the internet and then just keep running from there. And this is the 8xx matrix and it's using this Max7219 controller. This is a very, very cheap controller chip because there are 64 LEDs here. So you don't want to have 64 pins coming off and trying to connect to your Raspberry Pi. You couldn't even do it. There's not enough GPIO pins. So instead, this thing, you can talk to it over SPI and you can tell it what pins you want to turn on and off. And then it's got the 64 pins actually got, I think it's a crisscross matrix and it kind of activates them like that. So we need to wire the two together. So as I said, it uses SPI. And as I've covered this in many, many other videos, I hope you've been, you've followed along and you've seen them. Basically, you've got these five pins here. First two are for power. So you would connect up, for example, this module is a five volt module. So you can take the five volts directly off the USB and connect it to VCC. You can connect the ground up here to ground there. So that's the power for the module. And that leaves three pins there for the communication. Data in, chip select, and clock. And if you look over here on SPI zero, which is part of the Raspberry Pi's hardware, SPI clock, you've got a clock signal there, you've got a chip select uh, signal there, and TX, TX here goes to data in, there's a data out, TX, transmit to data in. So that's the data pin that connects to the TX. Let's just wire that up on our diagram here. So the clock goes through to the clock pin, and then this one goes through to the chip select, and finally this one here goes through to the data in. So if you wire up those five uh, wires on your display, onto your Raspberry Pico, that will become up and running. Of course, we need some software to run that, but that's basically what I've been showing you in the little demos I've been running. Now, how are we gonna know the time? Well, the traditional way of knowing time, of course, is to use NTP. However, that only gives you UTC time, and then you need to work out all the stuff about time zones and daylight savings, which can be quite complicated. So there is a website called World Time api.org and basically you can ask it for the time and if you see here it returns some json with all of the time information which is very very easy to parse you, if you go to the website there are some examples and there is specification so you can understand exactly and you are able to specify the time zone or if you just specify give me the time it will look at your ip address try to guess where you are in the world according to your ip address and then serve you your local times this is brilliant because all you've got to do is go and get a http request get back some json and parse it and now we know the time so if we use that along with the matrix along with the pico double which of course can connect to the internet we're going to have a time accurate binary clock so now we need to look at the python code that does all of that Okay, so to get this working, you're going to need a uh, module for Python that understands how to talk to the Mac 7219 uh, controller for that LED matrix. Thankfully, there is one already by Mike Causer. Here is the link to the original file. I will also have a copy of this inside of my GitHub repository. You basically need to take this file and put it onto your Raspberry Pi Pico and make sure its name is Mac7219.py. And then we can import that and start using it. Okay, let's look at the main code. So here is the main code. As you can see, the first line is to import the Mac7219. Uh, module that we've just copied over there from GitHub and a few other things that we're going to need here networking times and pins and so on as we build up this binary clock. So first thing is we set a global variable here which basically just defines which style we're using because I remember I covered three styles one two or three three column six column or the length style pretty simple. Now there's a function here where you basically give it some information about the display and then you basically give it 
uh, 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 an 8-bit byte and you give it the X position and across the bottom there and this goes through each bit this shifts the bit to the right here and as the ones and zeros drop off the end as it were we set the one or the zero accordingly on the display so basically this just works out what the ones and zeros are and sets the pixel accordingly when it needs to when it's a one uh, a similar helper function here called display bcd binary code decimal at very similar thing and what it does is it takes the two uh, parts of the if it's 14 it works out which is 1 and 4 by dividing it by 10 and then just calls that binary app function we just had there for the column and then the column next to it so if you pass in 14 it will do the binary for 1 and then it'll do the binary for 4 if you pass in 38 it'll do the binary for 3 and then the binary for 8 and that's pretty simple and then when we're using the length style a similar kind of thing here but it, rather than sitting on individual pixels it sets a v line uh, a vertical line and basically gives you the length of it uh, and if it's number nine there if it's nine then we do that little tail that twisted tail at the end to make sure the other pixel gets set so these are three functions just for setting ones and zeros on that uh, binary display now this next function here is what syncs with the world time uh, API there is the URL and if you pass it in just like IP it works out the time according to your IP address and does geolocation to find out where you are pretty simple all it does is just request using you requests the time API gets back some JSON okay and then once you pass Python's brilliant at parsing JSON you can just go through this JSON and just take out the different bits and because the uh, time and the date and all that are of a very fixed structure it's very easy to pick out the year the month the day and hours and minutes from the from the text that gets returned very very simple and then finally what it does is it sets the real-time clock to the current date and time so we pass in a real-time clock object here we'll look at how you create that in a minute and then it just goes ahead and sets the real-time clock on the board to that so you don't have to call this every second the clock will now tick and we can synchronize it every so often i've got it set to synchronize just about just about once a day so that you can make sure the time doesn't drift at all one thing to note here is there's a blocking flag if it can't get a reply from the world time uh, server api for whatever reason then it doesn't just sit here and wait it just says okay carry on we will uh, we will worry about this later and of course the first time you do it you want that to be true you want it to wait until you get a reply reply otherwise you won't know the time but for the updates like after a day two days three months whatever you don't really worry you can say oh, we'll catch it again the next time round. and here is the code for initializing the 8x8 matrix course we're using spi so we define an spi interface we need to give it what the clock is we need to give it the tx which is the mossy which is d in on that 8x8 display we need to choose the chip select and then we use this uh, python module we've just created there uh, max 7219 we create an 8x8 display we pass in the spi data and then we say well fill it all with zeros and then show that so we fill it all in and that basically means when you first boot up even before we connect to the wi-fi even before we try to sync up the date and time that display will go blank which is great if you're rebooting you can see that things are happening it goes blank and then of course it will start displaying the date and time when needed now here we are in raspberry pi pico w land so basically this is how you connect to a wi-fi network you basically uh, turn it all on and say connect and then here you need to provide your ssid and your password and then it basically sits here waiting for it to connect uh, obviously if it doesn't connect there's not a lot you can do if the password's wrong if the wi-fi is off it just sits there uh, and trying to connect uh, until it can manage that once it does manage that we just turn the lead on just to show that we're something's happening we're, we're actually managing to get the uh, the connection to the network and then we create this rtc object very simple rtc we've imported that here up at the very very top here we've actually imported rtc there so it knows what it is so we just say create me a real-time clock object okay and then we just call synchronize time with world time api passing in that real-time clock object first time round, it's blocking we're not specifying the flags that will be blocking is equal to true once that returns the real-time clock is now set so then we just go inside of a while loop which will just run forever and ever because it's while true so what does it do it turns the turns the led on or off toggles it so we kind of get a flashing uh, led on the board we get the current date and time from the real-time clock we make sure the display is blank and then we either depending on the style either display the binary or the bcd or the length functions and we've looked at those earlier according to the hours the minutes 
uh, and the seconds at the different column positions, 0, 3 and 6, so that they are all displayed exactly as we showed uh, in the demo and so on. And then once you've put all those in there, you do the display. And then there's this little counter in here after 85,000 seconds, which is a less, little less than a day, then hey, let's just check again to sync up the time to make sure everything is no drift going on, everything is okay, but this time it's blocking false, so you don't wanna stop the clock. If it uh, can't get an answer, you just keep going around here and adding one on that, so that will just go in there every once a day. Then here we we'll just sleep a second and then go and do it again. So after a second, go and get the current time. It doesn't matter if the second is the wrong thing because if you start at one and a half seconds, then you go to two and a half seconds. When you get the date and time, it will tell you the time is the seconds is still two. And then the next time around it will be three and four. And if it happens, turns out that it then ends up being skips one five, the clock will just keep uh, in sync. So it absolutely works brilliantly and that will just run around forever and ever. As I said, this code will be uh, in my GitHub repository. And there you have it, uh, three types of binary clock using the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.